Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We just got rid of Sunday snow, but get set to get wet. If we get into Tuesday, we'll see if it continues into Thanksgiving. A massive General Motors recall now underway. I'll tell you the vehicles being affected and why this alleged flaw is causing so much concern. All right, Hank, but we begin with breaking news in the battle over Michigan's election results. Just a short time ago, the state board of canvassers voted to certify the November election. The state canvassing board started its meeting this afternoon with hundreds of people lined up to online to comment. Three and a half hours later, the board voted to certify the election. We bring in Rod Maloney, who's live in Lansing. Rod. Yeah, Devin, it was a three uh, vote, three affirmative vote, one abstention, okay? So what was three really to nothing with one abstention. Um, and that was the concern that they would perhaps vote two to two, deadlock, and then have to send this thing off to the courts. That is not going to happen. This is how it played out earlier today. A long line of protesters drove along the front of the state capitol, demanding the state board of canvassers certify the vote by honking their horns. Yet far from the noise, the board of canvassers gathered together in a hearing room in Lansing and held a Zoom meeting. The state elections director, Jonathan Brader, led off the meeting with this assertion. The bureau has not identified any irregularities this year other than the typical occasional human error that is always part of the process. Overall, we had an extremely well-run and secure election. Detroit's election supervisor, Chris Thomas, among many, agreed with Brader and said that the board has no other legal duty than to certify, which led to this exchange with Republican Board of Canvassers member Norman Schenkel, who was looking for a delay in the certification. Delaying his voting, no, for today. Well, not, not necessarily. I mean, I think that, first of all, the answer is, of course, you can't vote no. There is no no in the circumstances. One of the reasons for the controversy today was what happened in Wayne County last week. Its local board of canvassers chair, Monica Palmer, testified that she now regrets certifying the vote. Had I had my wits about me a little more, I would have realized that that, that offer of the audit was not going to get us to where we needed to be to have the answers on those unexplained balances. And uh, so all of that controversy is now behind us and Michigan's electoral votes now go to Joe Biden. And uh, as things stand right now, the Board of Canvassers says they still want a full investigation into the irregularities. And in fact, Norman Schenkel, the one who voted absentee, said that he believes that a lot needs to change in Michigan's voting system between now and 2022. Back to you. Rod, as I was watching this online, I was stunned to see how many people were waiting in line to try to speak at this hearing. And, and the, the comments that were going up on the side of it, because it was yes. a YouTube video, were, were scrolling. You couldn't even read them. They were moving so quickly. Uh, at one point, they said there were 800 people who wanted to talk, which would have made it about a three-day-long hearing. <laughs> they decided this afternoon that at some point, you have to cut it off. They held the vote, and now it's, it has passed. Well, we had a very engaged electorate, obviously, on Election Day, and it continues mm -hmm. right through here a couple of weeks later. All right, Rod. Now, moving to the transition of power in Washington, as President-elect Joe Biden announces his first cabinet nominees. The Biden administration naming six national security and foreign policy nominees today. They include what would be the first Latino to head Homeland Security and the first female director of national intelligence. Former Secretary of State John Kerry was also named as a climate representative. Michigan Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin praised the Biden administration's selections. All of these folks have been tested. Um, they've had those moments where they had to make split second decisions. And so it's just a real emphasis on people who know how to work. Meanwhile, the Trump campaign continues to fight election results. It's asking for a second recount in Georgia after a first recount certified a Biden victory in that state. Now to the weekend coronavirus numbers. Over the past two days, remember on Mondays, it's a two-day total. The state reporting 11,511 new cases of COVID-19. So average that out to a little more than 5,700 cases a day. 
There were also 65 more coronavirus deaths over the past 48 hours. More encouraging vaccine news today, this time involving the vaccine from Oxford University and AstraZeneca. The drug maker says phase three trials find their vaccine is up to 90% effective. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with more details on this exciting development. Hi, Doc. Hey, Kim and Devin. Yeah, this trial tested two different dosing strategies. When the vaccine was given as a half dose, followed by a full dose at least a month later, it was 90% effective. Now, these results were based on the phase three trials in the United Kingdom and Brazil, which actually started before the U.S. trials. We spoke with one of the local researchers helping test this vaccine at the University of Michigan. We're really excited uh, both about these vaccines and their potential as well as the mRNA vaccines where there's been some data already reported by uh, Pfizer and Moderna. Dr. Daniel Call says U of M has been enrolling patients in the trial for several weeks now. He doesn't have any concerns about the speed with which the vaccine has been developed. Doing something fast and taking shortcuts are different things. Uh, in this case, it's, been, it's being done very um, quickly, but to my observation, there really haven't been any shortcuts. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has some advantages over the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. It can be stored in a refrigerator, making it easier to ship and distribute. It's also significantly cheaper to produce, costing just $3 to $4 per shot. AstraZeneca says there were no hospitalizations or severe cases of the disease reported in participants receiving the vaccine. Call is encouraged by the results so far and looks forward to seeing more data. Oh, there's a lot of controversy around vaccines. There really isn't any controversy around vaccines in the medical community. They've been one of the most important interventions and have saved more human lives than perhaps anything but, you know, clean water and things like that. Now, AstraZeneca and Oxford are expected to publish their results later this week. The results of the U.S. arm of the trial are expected to be closer to the end of the year, though. Yeah. So, Frank, does, does the U.S. portion of the trial have to be done, wrapped up before the FDA would consider the vaccine? Interesting point. No, it doesn't actually. AstraZeneca has already announced plans to submit their data to regulators in Britain, Europe, and Brazil. Mm -hmm. That may happen first, but these overseas trials could also be reviewed by the FDA even before the American data is available. And obviously, we'll just have to wait and see on that. We will be watching. Okay. Dr. McGeorge, thank you. Well, the rain and snow have uh, moved along, but the clouds are sticking around. They are hanging around here. Let's get over to Ben with a look at what we've got coming for later tonight. Hi, Ben. Hi, guys. Yeah, we get a little bit of a break here, and then we are back to rain and, yes, even some snow as we get into tomorrow. But let's first time out the rest of tonight, uh, which is going to be dry. High clouds will start becoming a little bit more prevalent and thicker tomorrow. And then just about 24 hours from now, we'll start seeing that rain push into the west and south zone. But in the north zones primarily, I think there's going to be just enough cold air uh, that we could be seeing some snow on the outset. But look at how long that rain lasts. Chances are going to be going through the day on Wednesday with maybe some breaks there early on Wednesday morning. Temperatures were close to average today, but you can see some of that cold air that's headed in our direction for tomorrow. And in fact, temperatures tonight going to be the coldest of the forecast. We'll look at that in your four zone outlook and also talk, of course, Thanksgiving Day in just a few minutes, guys. OK, Ben, an Oakland County K-9 officer and another driver are taken to the hospital after a crash this afternoon. This happened at Silver Bell Road and Country Crossing. We're told the deputy and the driver's injuries are not critical and the K-9 was not hurt in the crash. But you can see the deputy's SUV and the silver car involved both left with a lot of damage. Deputies are currently investigating. Tonight, Help Me Hank is following a major recall alert involving General Motors. Close to 7 million trucks and SUVs being called back because of a pretty familiar and potentially dangerous issue. Hank joins us live with more. We're talking, we're back again talking about airbag inflators, Hank. Hey, Devin, Kimberly, this recall is massive. And the one thing that everybody in the industry is looking at right now, not only the potential concern for those vehicles on the road and for passengers, but also the bottom line. This is going to cost General Motors more than a billion dollars. 
This recall is massive and will cost General Motors roughly $1.2 billion. The issue potentially dangerous Takata airbag inflators. Takata used ammonium nitrate to create a small explosion to fill airbags in a crash. But that chemical can break down when exposed to heat, causing a potentially dangerous or deadly explosion. Here's the information regarding the Takata airbag recall. 7 million vehicles being recalled, 27 people killed by exploding inflators around the world. The recall includes pickup trucks and SUVs from 2007 to 2014 and includes the Chevrolet Silverado, Chevrolet Suburban, Tahoe, Avalanche, Cadillac Escalade, GMC Sierra, and the GMC Yukon. A spokesperson for GM saying, although we are confident the inflators in the GMT 900 vehicles do not pose an unreasonable risk to safety, continue to perform as designed in the field and will continue to perform as designed in line with the results of our accelerated aging studies, we will abide by the NHTSA's decision to maintain the trust and confidence of customers and regulators. Back out here live, and because this recall involves so many vehicles and could potentially cost GM so much money, as you can imagine, the negotiation regarding this recall, it's been going on for a number of years, but GM uh, recently making the decision that customer uh, and passenger safety is utmost importance to the automaker. We're live here tonight in Ferndale. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. It's a big one. All right, Hank. All right, we are off and running here on a Monday. Let's check in with Defender Karen Drew. She just walked out of work one day, never to be seen again. What happened to Danielle Suzlicki? That also added a very mysterious twist to it. Now, the defenders go inside the investigation. This can't possibly be what happened. Coming up. Also, a crash sets off a deadly chain of events on the lodge. It's what happened in the minutes after that crash that really turned tragic. Nick? Bars and restaurants in the city of Detroit could stay afloat or at least do some business with outdoor dining, but those permits expire in exactly one week, so what now?